Order. The next item of business is the election to fill the vacant position of Deputy Speaker. And before we commence, I would like to remind members that the election of the Deputy Speaker will be conducted using the procedure set out in Standing Order 4. I will begin by asking for nominations. Any member may rise to propose that another member is elected Deputy Speaker. I will then ask for the proposal to be seconded by another member, as required by Standing Order 14. If this occurs, I will then verify that the member so nominated is willing to accept the nomination. There will not be an opportunity for speeches at that stage. I will then ask for further proposals and follow the same procedure for each. And when it appears that there are no further proposals, I will make it clear that the time for proposals has passed. If members indicate that they wish to speak for a debate relevant to the election, uh, then the election may then take place in which no member may speak more than once. At the conclusion of the debate, or the conclusion of the nominations, if there are no requests to speak, I will put the question that the member first proposed shall be a deputy speaker of this assembly. The vote can only be carried on a cross-community basis. If the proposal is not carried, I will put the question in relation to the next nominee, and so on until all nominations are exhausted. Once a speaker is elected, all other nominations will fall automatically. And if that is clear, we will proceed. Do you have any proposals for the Office of Deputy Speaker of this Assembly? And I call Mr. Peter Robinson. Mr. Speaker, can I propose uh, the name of Mr. Robin Newton uh, as a Deputy Speaker? Thank you. And is there a member to second the nomination? I'm to second. Thank you. And will the member accept the nomination to be the Deputy Speaker? Is there, thank you. And is there any further proposal? The time for proposals has expired. And a number of members have indicated that they wish to speak. I will remind members that they may speak only once in the course of the debate and that the Business Committee has agreed to allow each member wishing to speak up to three minutes. And I call Mr Peter Robinson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, I have known uh, Robin Newton for many decades now. Uh, he's been a close friend and colleague, uh, and of course uh, one of my colleagues in East Belfast uh, as well. Uh, he was, uh, I think, first elected to Stormont back in uh, 2003, so he has many years of experience of working under the procedures uh, of the Assembly. But even before that, of course, uh, he was uh, a member of Belfast City Council with long experience there. And that's a training ground for, for many uh, politicians, uh, and he certainly uh, learnt the ropes uh, in the, the City Council. Uh, he's been uh, recognised, and this will be a, the clincher for the Nationalist benches. He was recognised by Her Majesty the Queen, uh, and uh, he was uh, honoured with the, the MBE. Uh, and of course, in this House, uh, he has been a junior minister uh, in the uh, OFM DFM, and also. Uh, at one stage, he led our team uh, on the policing board. Uh, he has uh, a lifelong experience of parliamentary uh, procedures. Uh, he, uh, how, how shall I put it? He is not a divisive character. Uh, he is the kind of person who wants to resolve disputes. Uh, but uh, I think most of all, he will bring uh, <coughs> integrity to the position. Uh, he will show fairness in the way he carries out those duties. And I think importantly, because there is a, if you like, speakers panel, uh, there are a team of uh, deputy speakers uh, under the, the speaker, uh, and he is a team player, uh, and he will not uh, in any way shirk his responsibilities to do his duties. Uh, for all of those reasons, I believe that uh, uh, my colleague is a uh, suitable candidate for this job. I believe that he will carry it out uh, in a, uh, a fashion which will be uh, recognised by the, the whole of the House as being independent uh, and fair. Uh, and I urge colleagues to, to support him. Thank you. And we will move straight to the, uh, the question. The question is that the name of Robin Newton, as the only candidate proposed, shall be a Deputy Speaker of this Assembly. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it.
And as there are IAs from all sides of the House and there is no dissenting voices, I'm satisfied that cross-community support has been demonstrated. And I formally declare that Robin Newton has been elected as a Deputy Speaker. And I would like to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate you, Mr Deputy Speaker. As the requirements under Standing Order 5, brackets 1, have been fulfilled, it is now appropriate to move on to the election of the Principal Deputy Speaker. And I think the, uh, the yeah, just excuse me to think. Okay, and the next item of business is the nomination uh, of one of our deputy speakers to act as a principal deputy speaker, and the process will be conducted in accordance with Standing Order 5A. I will begin by asking for a nomination. Any member may rise to nominate one of the deputy speakers to act as a principal deputy speaker. I will then confirm that the person nominated is willing to act as Principal Deputy Speaker, and then a debate relevant to that nomination will take place. The Business Co Committee has agreed that only one member should speak on behalf of each party in the debate. At the end of the debate, I will put the question on the nomination, and the vote will be on a cross-community basis. If the proposal is not carried, I shall ask for further nomination, and the process will be repeated. And do I have a proposal for a Deputy Speaker to be nominated? to act as Principal Deputy Speaker, and members should raise in their place. And I call Ms Arlene Foster. Mr Speaker, uh, it's with great pleasure I put forward the name of Robin Newton, MBE, MLA. And Deputy Speaker, uh, Mr Newton, do you agree to act as Principal Deputy Speaker? I do, Mr Speaker. Thank you. And standing orders provide for a debate to take place on this nomination. Members may speak only once in the debate. Standing Order 5, bracket 7, requires the debate to be relevant to the nomination. I will not, therefore, allow members to stray into any other area. Members will have up to three minutes in which to speak. And I call Ms. Arlene Foster, who may wish to speak to the nomination. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I want to endorse everything uh, that the First Minister has said in relation uh, to Mr Newton and his uh, proposal to put him forward as Deputy Speaker. Uh, Robin was a, a Belfast City Councillor for 29 years, representing the Victoria uh, DEA, so he has a long history of working uh, in local government and in uh, the so-called Dome of Delight, which is uh, Belfast City Council. Um, first elected to this place in 2003 and then re-elected in uh, 2007 and, and 2011 and has, has been said he has served as junior minister, he has served on the policing board and it was my uh, pleasure as Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Investment to work with Robin uh, in his capacity as a, a member of uh, the Scrutiny Committee, the Detty Committee, and I have to say he was always a very fair uh, and detailed uh, member of that committee and dealt with issues in a very uh, impartial way. And I have no doubt uh, that if Robin uh, were to uh, succeed in becoming the Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, that he will show uh, that fairness that attention to detail, uh, that knowledge of the area in which he is dealing with. And uh, he is, uh, I have to say, Mr. Speaker, a very well-respected yeah. member, not just uh, within the ranks of uh, this party, but very well respected for his work uh, in the local community in East Belfast and indeed beyond. And uh, he has, of course, served on other committees as well. Uh, my knowledge of him particularly is through the Detty Committee, but he has served on the Dale Committee, where I know he took a particular issue, uh, interest in skills uh, and the promotion of skills within working class communities. And he has been on the Education Committee uh, as well, serving there for a number of years. So, so uh, it is uh, with great pleasure that I ask the House to endorse the proposal uh, to put that I've put forward in relation to Robin Newton as Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you. And I call Ms. Katrina Ruan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, um, I I rise to support the nomination of Mr Robin Newton um, and I would like at the outset to say that Martin McGuinness uh, would be doing this only he is currently out of the country on party business. Um, Sinn Féin is supporting the nomination of uh, Mr Robin Newton. To Sinn Féin ag Tuchtachyacht, Don Tussel, Robin Newton, Mar Prieve, Las Cancorlia. 
um, it is good. Uh, I think this will send out a very important signal um, to wider society today about the importance of power sharing in relation to Speaker and Principal Deputy Speaker. And this is part of the working out of uh, that agreement in relation to power sharing. And I do believe that this is uh, a step forward and progress is being made. Um, I have no doubt that Robin Newton will act impartially. I have no doubt that he will understand the important role of this office. Um, I've worked with them on a number of uh, committees and organisations, including the Policing Board. Um, Sinn Féin welcome this nomination. The Sinn Féin team very much look forward to working with Mr Robin Newton and indeed the full Speaker team under the leadership of our Speaker, Mitchell McLaughlin. Um, so, Gunairi uh, and and we are, our doors are open to work in any way uh, with you to fulfil your duties. Thank you. Thank you. And I call Mr. Loris Kelly. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, can I begin by congratulating uh, Robin Newton on his appointment as Deputy Speaker? I have worked alongside Robin for some time now on the Policing Board and indeed have seen his skill at uh, trying to resolve difficult situations uh, in practice at uh, the board. So I do hope uh, that those skills he will carry through uh, to uh, the Speaker's office as he seeks to, I'm sure, uh, determine many contentious issues and on some of the referrals and matters that will be inevitably uh, referred uh, to your office, uh, Mr Speaker. Nonetheless, I do have to place once again on record the SDLP's opposition to the appointment of a Principal Deputy Speaker. There is no such post in any other jurisdiction. There was no such case uh, presented either to this House or indeed to the public as to why there should be such a position. Rather, it is uh, symbolic of the continued carve-up between Sinn Féin and the DUP. And uh, I'm not too sure whether uh, Katrina Rand spoke with tongue-in-cheek or with absolute sincerity when she said it was an example of power sharing. I mean, I nearly collapsed with laughter at that one, uh, Mr Speaker, because, you know, it really is more symbolic of the continued carve-up and the hierarchy of, uh, of speakers that there are uh, within, uh, and, uh, within this House. And uh, I think it also uh, would do members well of Sinn Féin to reflect on uh, the words from the Deputy First Minister over the weekend when he talked about equality and parity of esteem. I really don't know where Sinn Féin get off. I really don't. I mean, saying that today and over the course of the weekend, and yet we have them endorsing the position of a, a Principal Deputy Speaker, a clear hierarchy of a positioning and power within this House. And unfortunately, uh, without any uh, slur or slight on Mr Newton's appointment as a Deputy Speaker, we in the SDLP do not support uh, this position. We don't believe uh, that uh, the House is better managed as a result, that it adds anything uh, to uh, the good temper or indeed the business of the House, but it creates instead a wider consternation amongst uh, Assembly members and indeed the wider public of the continued uh, lack of inclusivity, collective decision making and real power sharing that ought to exist as a result of the Good Friday Agreement and the endorsement of the people of Ireland. Thank you, and I call Mr David Ford. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And can I start by actually congratulating you on your election as Speaker, since this is the first time I've spoken in the Chamber since your election. And can I then congratulate Robin Newton on his election as Deputy Speaker. I don't need to add to the tributes which are paid by those who proposed him uh, for both the offices for which he's been proposed today. And certainly we will be very happy to work with him in his role as Deputy Speaker alongside others. I do, however, share many of the reservations which have just been expressed by Dolores Kelly into the concept of the Principal Deputy Speaker. When you, Mr Speaker, were appointed Principal Deputy Speaker, it was clear that you were there as an understudy as part of an agreement that the post of Speaker was to be shared in this Assembly term, and you perhaps had a rather longer apprenticeship than might have been expected initially, but it was an understanding that the position was changing and it was an understanding of full buying into the institutions by members of Sinn Féin. But that doesn't mean that we need to continue forever with the presumption that the two largest parties will have a carve-up of what should be a post and a series of posts, the Speaker and the Deputy Speakers, to represent all of the House, to stand for the House as opposed to the Executive, to stand in a different position. And on that basis, the concept that because there is now a Sinn Féin speaker, there must be a DUP principal deputy speaker with no specific role 
is not something which appeals to me. I certainly uh, shared the, the views which Dolores Kelly expressed when I heard of power sharing being mentioned from Katrina Iran, because when the two largest parties take everything, even down to the nominating a principal deputy speaker, which is of no more significance than a deputy speaker, it does rather look that it's not just a matter of an understudy coming into place a few years ago, but it's now an intention to hold on to the top office between the two of them. And that raises real questions about the way this assembly functions and the attitude of the two largest parties to it. So like Mrs. Kelly, I cannot support the concept of a DUP principal deputy speaker now being an automatic expectation because there is a Sinn Féin speaker. Mr. Newton is very welcome as deputy speaker. But if we are to have a principal deputy speaker, it should actually be a post which is shared and not carved up. Thank you. And I call Mr. Jim Allister. I do not quibble at all uh, on the appointment of Robin Newton as deputy uh, speaker. He is well experienced and uh, well skilled in the performance of those duties, I have no doubt, and I congratulate him as deputy speaker. But I do most certainly quibble over the appointment of a non-post principal deputy speaker. It is a pointless position, a purposeless position, one which this Assembly found it didn't need for many years, and then suddenly, uh, through a deal between the DUP and Sinn Féin, this bubble was created, created to keep uh, Mr Hay as Speaker for a, another couple of years, and the buy-off in that was to create for those who used to eschew titles. Now, of course, they're stewards of this uh, and all sorts of things. Uh, but to, for those who used to eschew uh, such baubles was created this non-post of principal deputy speaker. And now that the DUP has enthroned Sinn Féin as speaker of this House, it is their turn to don the bauble and the title of principal deputy speaker. It is a vanity post. It is nothing more than a vanity post. And of course, and of course, because Sinn Féin are now Speaker, DUP must be principal deputy speaker. To the very point of ridiculousness, that the principal deputy speaker is going to be someone who's never even sat on the speaker's chair. Yet we have deputy speakers who have been occupying, performing that role for years. But they are not worthy. They are not worthy, it seems, to, to be called principal deputy speaker. And so, so we must have this madness, this carve-up of elevating, because to this post previously specially created for Sinn Féin and now specially created and maintained for their counterpart. Thank you. That is it. Order. I remind the House that cross-community support is required. And the question is that the nomination of Deputy Speaker Robin Newton to act as Principal Deputy Speaker be approved. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Okay, clear the lobbies. The question will be put in three minutes.
Order. The members would resume their seats. Thank you. And <clears throat> the question is that the nomination of Deputy Speaker Newton to act as Principal Deputy Speaker be approved. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. No. Do we have tellers? That was a quieter one. Order. Order. Tellers have been appointed as follows. Tellers for the ayes are George Robinson and Adrian McQuillan. Tellers for the noes are Karen McAvitt and Stuart Dixon. Clear the lobbies. The assembly will divide. Ayes to my right, noes to my left.
Order of members resume their seats. Clerk, read the result. 95 members voted, of which 63 voted aye, which is 66.3 per cent. 37 nationalists voted, of which 25 voted aye, which is 67.6 per cent. 50 unionists voted, of which 38 voted aye, 76 per cent. Eight others voted, none voted aye. The motion is carried by cross-community consent. Order. The motion is agreed, and I offer my congratulations to Principal Deputy Speaker Mr Robert Newton, and that concludes this item of business.